Okay, I think we're good to go. We're live. Hello, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everybody. And welcome to the latest OET All-Star Session with Swoosh English. My name's Scott. I'm the Managing Director and an expert OET teacher here at Swoosh English. And it's great having everyone here today and um, logging in today to check out our latest OET All-Star Session. So please say hello in the chat box, please, if you're watching on the Swoosh English channels or the OET YouTube channel. We are live streaming on every single one of those today. So yeah, let's, um, let's um, get to know you. Say hello, say why you're here, introduce yourself, and I'll call out a few comments before we get started. So hope your day is going great, everyone. I hope everyone's um, enjoying their Friday, getting ready for a weekend. Maybe you're working in your shifts. Maybe you're doing some OBT exam preparation, but it's a good Friday here at Swoosh English and we're excited to get stuck into the session. So hello, Alexia. Thanks a lot for coming today. Hello to Asia as well. And hello to Manful, who've all said hello on the channel. Over on the um, OBT YouTube channel, I can't bring up any comments, but I'm going to say hello to Sharmila. I'm going to say hello to Naresh. Rashwali, Ralina, Jasmine, Mona, Namisha, and SJ have all said hello so far. There's plenty more comments coming in too. So thank you, everyone. And yeah, let's get stuck into today's session. We've got a great one coming up. We are going to go through an all-star session focusing on OET speaking. Um, it's kind of the thing I like to do here at the in these all-star sessions is focus on mock speaking practice, go through some role plays and uh, give you some tips and tricks to take away for your own OET preparation. So yeah, that is exactly what we are doing today, guys. We're gonna go through a step-by-step step, step guide to improving your time management, a really important factor in ensuring that your, um, your speaking performance is as good as it can be. There will be a live OET role play demonstration today too. So if you get a chance to take part in that, how fantastic. But if you don't, because I can't do hundreds of people today, there's still a lot of merit in you getting a chance to listen to other people do the role play and reflect upon your own performance in that role play um, as well. But before we get stuck into the session, guys, we're of course doing a free session today. Who would, be, who would we be at Swoosh English if we weren't giving you access to more free sessions? So we run a lot of free workshops here at Swoosh English designed to give you all the tips and tricks that you need to pass your OET exam first time. And our next workshop is a reading part C workshop. Now let me know in the chat box if you guys have any struggles with reading part C. I reckon you probably do because it is an area of a lot of stress and pain for a lot of candidates. So that's why we're running a free reading part C workshop, Wednesday, 11 a.m. UK time. So we'd love to have you in that workshop uh, to go through the following. We'll take you through how to get an A or B with example tasks in reading part uh, C. We'll talk about the most common reasons for failure and how to avoid them in reading part C. Time management tips for part C. We're doing time management for speaking today, but in this workshop, we'll go through crucial time management techniques for part C to ensure that you get through the entire exercise on time. And also there'll be a Q&A with me in which you can ask me any questions you have about reading part C or A or B or anything else as it comes for OET. So I'll go through at the end of this session, a bit of a longer demonstration for you to access the session. If you want to join our completely free OET Reading Part C workshop, there will be a comment, uh, sorry, a, a link coming through in the chat in a moment. So make sure you click on that link. Step two is scanning here, please. So if you see the barcode there, get your phone out and scan that now to bring up a link to get access. Now, some of you might not be able to um, any of those sign up options if you can't either see a link or use the barcode then just pop on over to www.swishenglish.com down on the bottom right hand side of the screen as you can see here there's a little button on our website that says chat with us and um, just ask our team about the reading part c workshop and we'll be very 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 happy to give you the link and get you signed up okay so i'll give you a moment in case you want to quickly get signed up now to the reading part c workshop but there will be another chance for you to get signed up um, very, very soon at the very end of the class. So just keep that in mind. Okay, let's get stuck in today's session. So before I begin, I'd like to know, for everyone who's watching this session today, 
when do you plan to take your OET exam? Let me know, because I love knowing exactly what timelines we're working with here, how far along you are on your preparation, aka are you just beginning, just kind of dabbling with OET preparation at this point and assessing when to take the exam and how to prepare, or maybe you've got your exam booked and you are dedicated to getting your pass. So let us know in the chat box, please. When do you plan to take your OET exam? Let me know, please. And I'll, of course, look at a few comments. I'll see what people say. And I'll announce to the rest of the, of the, of the team who's all here doing that. So we got Bindamol, who's taking it on the 24th. We got Ruth, who's taking it in March. We got SJ taking it on the 24th of this month. We've got uh, Marion with a lot of numbers, 14th of Feb. We get Stephanie, 6th of March. We got Sharmila, April. We got Bernice, six months' time. And we got Shrift Karnan taking it on the 20th of April. A few on the Swish English feed. We got Asia, who's taking it on the 5th of March. We got Ace taking it on the 9th of March. We got Alexia saying two to three months' time. So I'm guessing, Alexia, you're still dabbling about when to take the exam. We got DG is saying April. And we've got another friend of mine saying April as well. Okay, guys. So a lot of you are taking this exam upcoming in the next few months. Some of you this month, some of you in one month, some of you in two months, some of you in three months' time. Okay. Now, the key to passing OET is taking the exam when you are ready to pass. So do not rush into taking your exam, ultimately. Ideally, prepare first and only take the exam when you are ready. OK, but for those who are coming up to their exam date very soon, make sure you are ready to go to pass your exam on the day. But thank you very much for those comments. They were very useful for me. OK, let's now get into today's session. We're going to talk about how to manage your time effectively in OET speaking. We're going to go through some tips and strategies for you to carry out in your own time to ensure that you can manage your time effectively. Okay, before we get into that though, we need to know exactly what we are managing. How much time are we managing? So let's have a look now at OET speaking, the basics. All right, so we've got four different categories here of what we need to do in OET. I want you now to fill out the numbers. Let me know, firstly, how many role plays do we have to do? How many minutes are each in each role play? How many minutes of preparation time do you have per role play? And how many minutes total is OET speaking? So just fill out your numbers, guys, in the chat box, please. Activity for everyone. How many role plays? How many minutes each? How many minutes preparation time do you have? And how many minutes total are there in OET speaking? So fill out your numbers. We'll see how well you know the testing criteria for OET speaking, and we'll see exactly how well you are, uh, how much knowledge you have in this regard, so that we can actually go ahead then with diving into your preparation time and your preparation speak. Just give everyone a few more seconds to throw their answers in, and then we'll bring up the answers on the screen. Thank you everyone for all of your comments. I love an engaged bunch of students in these sessions. It shows that you are active and you are ready to go. Thank you, guys. Lots of comments coming in. Let's now get into the answers and we'll see exactly where you are in this assessment. OK, so the first answer is that there are two role plays that you have to do for OET speaking. Most candidates know that. Fantastic. The second answer is that each role play is five minutes each. So each time you conduct a role play in OET speaking, you have five minutes approximately time. It's not always going to be exactly five minutes, but you should aim to be completing a role play satisfactorily within a five minute time in your preparation time. Thirdly, then, we have three minutes of preparation time total. That is the key metric that we're going to focus today because time management has a lot to do with those three minutes of preparation time. And then finally, OET in total, the OET speaking section is about 20 minutes in total. So well done. I see a lot of you managed to get a lot of those answers correct. Well done. If you didn't get them correct, make sure you know these numbers really well, because you must go into OET feeling prepared and knowing exactly what you are doing. Okay, so let's have a look now 
uh, tips and strategies for effective time management for OET speaking. But for this mini session, we're going to focus especially on the preparation side. Because if we can nail what we do and how we spend our time in those three minutes of preparation time, then we can manage our time much more effectively within the five minutes of speaking. So preparation for OET speaking is a key component. So let's now go through a few things that we can do to ensure that our preparation time is really, really appropriately managed and make our speaking assessment much more effective in the actual role play itself. Okay, so let's take an example role play card here. The first thing that we should do when we look at the role play in your three minutes time, identify the patient's name. And also this is a new consultation or a follow-up, okay? So we might not actually have the patient's name, okay? Just keep that in mind. The patient's name might not be there on the role play card. Often it's not. So what do we do if the patient's name is not on the role play card? It probably makes sense for us to be speaking to a person. It just makes our role play much more natural and empathetic and free flowing if we're speaking to a person, okay? If we don't know the patient's name, it's much more awkward to make that connection with them. So what we just simply do during your preparation time is ask the interlocutor, excuse me, what can I call you in this role play? The interlocutor on the OET exam day will give you a name, probably their first name that you can call them. So you can just name the patient by their first name. It's going to make your whole role play experience just much, much, much more natural. So make sure you do ask that essential question. Okay, I'm going to skip back then and just say, uh, I've actually forgot to go over this part, is we also need to identify if this is a new consultation or a follow-up because the way we start a role play will be different compared to a new consultation or a follow-up. So therefore, it's important for us to plan this in advance so that we know the flow of the role play. So based on that, can you tell me, guys, based on looking at this role play card, is this a new consultation or is this a follow-up? Let us know either new or follow-up in the chat box. And of course, if you can, give your reasons for telling me your answer. Why do you think this is a new consultation entirely or a follow-up from a previous consultation? Give everyone a few seconds to bring their answers in and then I'll show you why um, the answer for that and why you picked the answer to be correct at this point. Okay, so what do we know? Do we know it's a new follow-up or a, or a consultation? Let us know in the chat box. Okay, some answers are coming in. Thank you very much. We're all saying a few things. Okay, great. So in this consultation itself, we can know that the patient has actually been to a previous clinic, okay? So they bring, they've actually gone through a bit of a consultation before, but this, this actual role play card is a new consultation to this particular nurse. This is a completely new consultation to this nurse, but it is a follow-up in the previous process, okay? Because they've gone through stitches removal. So this nurse is probably seeing this patient for the very, very first time, therefore making it new, even though it does follow up from processes behind. So think about how you would then um, identify and go through the role play in terms of speaking to this nurse likely for the very first time. Okay, thank you. Now, we've done that, perfect. Now, um, the second thing we want to do is we've identified the name of the patient, identify if it's a new consultation or a follow-up, is we want to assess the urgency and the tone of this particular role play card as well. So looking at the information on the card, we want to know um, what is the setting first and foremost and what sort of tone would this suggest? So we find the setting at the very, very start of the role play card. We can see the setting here is in fact the clinic. So based on the clinic setting, guys, what sort of tone would this suggest? Is this an urgent setting? Is this a stress setting? Is this a more relaxed setting? Let us know in the chat box. What do you think this particular setting and the kind of consultation that the candidate is going through at this point, would this be something that's more urgent and more stressful or something a bit more relaxed and a bit more easy going? What do we think in the chat box, guys? Throw your answers in, okay? All right, the answers are coming in. So given that it's a clinic, 
And there's nothing about this particular role play card that would suggest that this is super urgent and super scary to the candidate. We can suggest this might be a little bit more on the relaxed side, okay? It's not an A and E setting. It's not a life or death situation as well. This is more relaxed, okay? So we can then um, anticipate that the language and the tone from the candidate will also be a bit more relaxed. So we'll be doing less stress busting and will be more easy going with this consultation too, okay? So that's good to identify because now we can preeminate what's going to happen next in the role play card. It's more of a relaxed setting. Tip three, then in our preparation time, because all of this will save you time in the role play itself, is to ask these three questions. Who, what, and when? And what do we mean specifically by who, what, and when, okay? We're asking, who are we speaking to? What is their condition? And when did this start? So who are we speaking to? Who is the person? What is their role? What is the condition? And when did this begin? Is this a new consultation? What, or has this been going on for a while? When did this patient last present themselves with this problem? Et cetera, et cetera. So just take a moment now to identify in this role play card, who are we speaking to? What's their role? What's their condition? What's their edge, for example? What is the condition? And when did it begin? Okay. So have a look through and just write down some notes or take some mental notes about how we can answer these three questions. Because all this is really important to our preparation if we know exactly what these things are. Okay. Great, guys. So who is the patient? They're a 51 year old person with their name being the name the interlocutor has given. What is their condition? Well, they've had a diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma and they've come to remove the stitches from the lesion. When did this happen? Um, we know that there was a previous uh, diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma. We know also that they've had sun exposure previously in their life. We know that the wounds were the, the they assess by doctor, the stitches need to be removed after seven to 14 days. These are the things that we can go on in terms of how long this process has been going on. So make sure you ask yourself these questions and scan the role play card to answer them. Okay, so as mentioned, what we can do to find out very quickly is most of the information for those three questions will come in this scenario overview for this information. And the scenario overview is this little overview paragraph here that comes below setting and above the task card. So make sure you look at this little section here to find that information. Everything has been there. Okay, now tip number four is to read the tasks and anticipate what the tasks are gonna ask us to do. The first thing that we should do when we are assessing the tasks is to focus on the verb. So I'm gonna give everyone a moment now if you can identify the verbs in the tasks and write out a few of the verbs that you see. So scan the task card Confirm the verbs, aka the action words, the doing words, the things that must be done now by you in this consultation. What are these verbs? And write them into the chat box, please. I'll give everyone a few seconds to identify them. And uh, then we'll have a look at the verbs together in terms of what they mean and uh, what you have to do. Okay, guys, fantastic. Some of the verbs are coming in. I'll give everyone a few more seconds just to identify them. And then we'll go through them uh, together. Perfect, guys. Right. Good. So the verbs that we have are the first words in the task card. These are the verbs we must identify. Okay. So there's five bullet points, which means there are five verbs. We have the first verb confirm. Then we have give. Then we have resist. Then we have stress. And then we have emphasize. So the verbs are here, 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 and here. Now just take note that this is not an exhaustive list of the verbs. There's a lot more verbs that we might have to cover. So make sure, of course, that you are going through practice in your own time for OET speaking, a variety of role play cards, and assessing yourself throughout a variety of verbs as well, because you have to take a different approach according to the different verbs. Let's identify them together. So confirm would mean that we have to answer something, confirm what's happened here today, okay? Get an assessment from the candidate. Give is just simply to explain some information to the candidate. Resist is an interesting one, which means that 
um, the candidate, the patient is going to ask you something that you don't want to do. So you have to resist giving in to their demands. How might we do that effectively? Stress is when you are giving information, but you're obviously stressing the importance of it. So you might need to use more direct and stronger language there. And then emphasize is, of course, just given further reasoning why this might be a very, very important decision. So it's really important that we know the usage of these verbs. We identify them correctly. We're able to do them really well in the role play card itself because it will make our role play performance better and ultimately save us time in the assessment itself. OK, so tip number five, then, is to anticipate how the patient might be feeling. So we might have some clues at this point. The setting, for one. The synopsis in the, um, the blurb at the very top. Who are they? What's their condition? Have they been here before? OK. As well as some information we might have assessed in the task itself. What kind of language do we have to use? Are we doing a lot of explaining or are we doing a lot of emphasizing and stressing? So how might the patient be feeling? Well, we can find this out in two different places here. OK. So first and foremost, we have to find out if the patient has any concerns. So based on that, the patient may have some queries about their condition. They might be scared. They might be fearful. We need to find that out. So assess, OK, how might the patient's mindset be if I have to do something like this? And the second thing we managed to find here in this role play card is reassure the patient about the effectiveness of surgery. So a patient has to undergo some surgery. They might be scared about that. Then they might be worried. They might be anxious. So based on that, we might want to anticipate how we might want to overcome any fears that they might have or any stress they might be having. So based on that, we want to figure out questions like this. Are they, are they worried? Are they stressed? Are they anxious? Are they relaxed? Are they irate? Are they angry? It helps us to assess how the role play itself might go. Okay. Now, tip number six, ultimately, I have is really about the role play card itself. But we want to avoid complicated medical jargon when we're giving our actual speaking assessment itself. And the reason for that is because we don't want to go into detail with all of the complicated words because it doesn't make us effective communicators. Secondly, it might make the role play card trickier to convey. So use layman language, use simpler language when we are dealing with the role play itself, and it will make everything just much easier and much simpler for you. It also might not it will also result in us not overcomplicating the role play which will therefore mean that we can go through the role play card within five minutes better so my rule because the scoring criteria is based on this too is to keep everything as simple but accurate as possible to convey yourself to the candidate as effectively as possible so please keep that sixth tip in mind now the seventh tip and we're going to talk directly about role play management here this is when we're now doing the role play itself so how should we roughly be dividing our time when doing our role play assessment, guys. Well, OK, let's assume we have five bullet points as a whole. Some role plays may be more, some role plays may be less. Keep that in mind. But four to five bullet points is typically what we see in OET role plays. All right, so I'll skip the intro and go straight to the bullet points. If we have five bullet points, we want to be speaking for about 45 to 60 seconds on each bullet point, ideally in the lower 45 second range, OK? So that gives us how much time we want to actually go through each bullet point on a satisfactory level. It's not a lot of time. Therefore, we need to be quick. Therefore, when we take away that amount of time for the role play itself, it leaves us about 20 to 30 seconds for the intro of the role play and about 20 to 30 seconds for the closure of the role play, giving us roughly about five minutes time in total to deliver the role play. What I experience at Swoosh English, as our teachers do, is that candidates typically overestimate their time and spend far too much time on one particular bullet point and not go through enough time on other bullet points to get the role play to a close. So I want you all, when you're doing your own OVT speaking, is to assess yourself within these time parameters. If you're able to, st to um, stick roughly to these time parameters, then our time management should be quite good in the role play itself. So think to yourself, am I currently doing this in my own OET speaking or am I not? And if I'm not, how can I find out and assess myself that I'm able to stick to these rough times during the OET speaking role play? OK, guys, those are my top seven tips for time management, for preparation and the speaking section itself. If you enjoyed that, let me know in the comments. Now, 
I've got another question for everyone here before we get into some mock practice today is there are two sets of criteria for OET speaking. What are they? I'm going to assess now exactly how well you know you are scored when it comes to OET speaking today. So let us know in the chat box, how, what are the two sets of OET speaking criteria? Please let me know here in the chat box. Okay, some comments are coming in with the answers. Fantastic, very, very good. Keep them coming, keep them coming. We do seem to know what we're talking about here. Fantastic. I'm gonna try and find one to bring up on the screen, one lucky person who got the answer right. Okay, fantastic. So we got a few people on the YouTube channel saying, linguistic and clinical communication criteria. Fantastic, you are correct, guys. So there are two different criteria that we need to assess. And Asia in the Swoosh English channel has also said it yourself. Thank you very much, Asia, for contributing that answer. So there are linguistic and clinical communication criteria. We need to know these two criteria and what the differences are to ensure that we are gearing up our speaking to fulfill this criteria while not doing things that are not going to help us with the scoring criteria whatsoever. Okay, so I'm going to briefly kind of go over a few questions that are going to assess your linguistic criteria scores. Okay, the first thing is, what I want to assess someone on is, did the speaker speak clearly and was easy to understand? Did they vary their pronunciation and intonation relevantly? So your pronunciation is your ability to pronounce the various sounds in the English language. Intonation is your tone as you rise and fall, depending on when you want to deliver a question or ask a question or deliver a final sentence. What's your intonation like when you are speaking? We don't want to see it flat like this. Did the speaker speak fluently and smoothly with few hesitations and false starts? Now keep in mind, you will make some mistakes when it comes to hesitations and, um, and false starts. Even I do that, native English speaking teacher, we don't need you to be perfect. But what we do need you to do is maintain a pretty constant level of speech. And that's why it's so important that we plan our answers in advance, but also we don't overcomplicate things. We keep things nice and simple and moving. Accuracy is more important than complication when it comes to fluency and uh, smoothness. Uh, Fourth question is, did the speaker use appropriate language and tone, aka were you suitably clinical, but also approachable to the candidate themselves? You don't want to be too stuffy, too much like a doctor, too much like a nurse. Be accessible and free flowing to the candidate. And then finally, number five, did the speaker use relevant and correct vocabulary and grammatical structures? But most importantly, we want your grammar and your vocabulary to be accurate, even if it is simpler versus more complicated, but inaccurate. So a key takeaway from linguistic criteria is accuracy and simplicity is more important than overcomplication using big words and big fancy grammatical structures inaccurately because it will impede your communication, guys. So simplify it and keep it accurate. Much easier than doing the other thing. Then the second set of, of uh, criteria is the clinical communication questions. This is directly inquiring your ability to speak in a clinical setting. So the first question we have was, did the empathy, did the, did the empathy, did the speaker speak in a way that offered empathy and support? Were you caring to the candidate? Did the speaker listen to the patient and respond effectively and appropriately? You'll spend a good amount of time in this role play asking questions. Therefore, you do need to show that you are listening and respond appropriately to the questions versus thinking ahead what they're going to say and butting in. Make sure you're listening effectively. Was the delivery information structured appropriately? AK, did you go through the bullet points in order? Were you roughly able to answer everything within the five minute time period? Did the speaker ask a variety of open and closed questions? So an open question is something that has a long answer, a closed question that has a simple yes, no answer. You'll need to use both of these questioning structures appropriately to fulfill the scoring criteria, especially when it comes to giving and gathering information. And then finally, was the patient satisfied with the delivery of the information? This is just how I assess candidates at the very end of the day, aka if I was a patient today, would I have been happy about what I received today? Was I listened to? Was I cared about? Was I clear what was happening next? Et cetera, et cetera. So basically just something that we think about when it comes to the assessments. 
Hope you find that useful, guys. Obviously, that was a very, very quick assessment of the scoring criteria. We need to go into that deeper in future lessons. But today, just an assessment about what is kind of coming up next in this session. And that is a speaking role play, okay? So in a minute, guys, I'm going to post a link to come in to the class with me today to do a speaking role play with me. You can practice what we've demonstrated today when it comes to time management techniques. We can also then practice overall your speaking performance in a role play. So in a moment, there's gonna be a link that is going to appear in the chat box, okay? So I want you then to click that link, come into the chat box itself, um, come into the session. Ideally, I would like, of course, someone who has a camera. I like speaking to someone face-to-face -face versus someone on the internet. It makes the experience better and it will make it better for you. I would also like someone to have, um, obviously, a quiet environment, ideally, with less interruption, and of course, a stable internet connection too. If the internet connection isn't stable, I may have to give the opportunity to someone else in the time that we have, okay? So if you're ready, guys, the, the link is going to come in now in a second. So you'll see that link. If you're interested, click on that link and come on in. I would love to have you in the session, okay? So I'm gonna bring up the role play card now in a second on the screen. A three minute timer will also begin, which will mean then, that will give three minutes to prepare like the real OET exam itself. We're going to try and keep it to mock exam situations. So mm -hmm. in a minute, I'm going to bring up the role play card, put it full screen. The timer will begin. Everyone will have three minutes to prepare. And then once the preparation time is up, I'm going to bring someone into the studio today with me or the classroom, should I say, to do some mock speaking practice. Hope that sounds good, everyone. All right. So here we go. Your time has begun. The role play card is the one that we just talked about there in the last uh, number of minutes in this session. Good luck. I look forward to having a nurse come into the session to do some speaking with me. See you in just under three minutes. And five, four, three.
three, two, and one. There we go. Three minutes is up. Let me know in the chat box that the quickest or the shortest three minutes of your life. Um, it's not a lot of time, but sometimes it goes through really, really slowly. So yeah, let's get um, let's get the role play card up on the screen, and we'll now go through um, we'll go through the assessment time now with the lucky candidate. So um, I'm going to bring in to the session today Joyce, who is waiting in the studio. So Joyce, I'm going to turn on your camera in a few seconds. Just get ready. And uh, I look forward to doing a role play with you. So in three, two, and one. Hello, Grace, you are in the Hi. classroom with me. Hello, how are you? I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's completely, completely normal. That's completely normal. It's a sign that you're ready to do some speaking today. And there will be nerves on the exam day. But yeah, just enjoy this I'm process practice. today. Yeah. Yeah, just just relax and enjoy the process. It's designed to be good. Um, how are you today, and where are you from? I am from the Philippines. Are you in the Philippines now? Yes. Very good. What part of the Philippines are you from? I'm in the central upper part of the uh, Philippines. <laughs> central upper <laughs> part. I, I think we I think we know where that is. Yes. Um, perfect. So um, tell me a bit about why you're taking OVT, when you're taking OVT, and where you hope to move. I'm taking the OVT. Hopefully, I can be ready by next month. And uh, I wanted to uh, move to Australia. Very nice. <laughs> where, where do you plan to go to in Australia? Um. Nothing yet. It's just that I want to be in a pediatric um, hospital or pediatric uh, ward. Very nice. Very good. What's your biggest challenge with OBT and are you feeling prepared for it? Um, I've been studying for about a month now mm -hmm. and um, it's actually a struggle to, to have um, to have a study buddy for the speaking. <laughs> yeah. But um, generally, I think I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> Good. Well, the fact you're here today engaging in some feedback with me, your study buddy today, is, is a good sign. It's what you want. It's what you need. Some feedback on your speaking. So I'm happy to go through um, a mock role play with you today and uh, assess your performance and uh, give you some pointers uh, in terms of what you're doing well and what I think you should work on. Does that sound good? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Perfect. All right, Joyce, are you feeling less nervous now? OK, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit, maybe. OK. All right, so what I'm going to do now in a second is I'm going to just uh, get my timer up. I'm going to try and time this roughly around five minutes, but I don't want you to think about the time today. I want you just to go through the role play naturally, thinking about it as, as you would do it. Of course, if we can manage our time effectively, that's fantastic, but don't think about the time overly. Just go through it naturally as much as possible. So whenever you are ready, Joyce, just let me know. Start. You can start speaking in the role play. Ask the first question, and uh, and we'll go through it together. And I hope that you enjoy the experience. Does that sound good? Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, Joyce. Over to you. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll get stuck into the role play. A good afternoon, Scott. My name is Joyce. I'm the nurse here today at the clinic. I see you've come here to uh, remove your stitches, is that correct? Yes, that's right. Thank you, nurse. Uh, do you have any concerns about it? Well, yeah, to be honest, uh, this is skin cancer. I'm, I'm a bit worried about it. <laughs> the doctor said it was something called squamous cell carcinoma. Um, this is quite scary to me. Can you tell me more? What does this mean? I understand that you're kind of worried about your condition and it's absolutely normal. I am here to help you and explain to you um, a bit of uh, information about squamous cell carcinoma. Would that be all right? Please, thank you. <laughs> okay, so first, uh, squamous cell carcinoma is a type of skin cancer. 
you're right. Uh, it is uh, most commonly caused by overexposure to sunlight. Uh, and then, um, but I would like to reassure you that your surgery went well, your lesion has been removed. Uh, is that clear? The, the, okay, that's good to know. Is this a minor skin cancer or is this quite dangerous? At this point, Scott, uh, your cancer is uh, unlikely to spread. So uh, I think it's, um, it's quite stable right now, but I must uh, highlight to you that it is still important to monitor your skin for any um, new spots or uh, if there is any change in the appearance of uh, your moles. Yeah. And lastly, it would be uh, beneficial for you if you will still have your regular checkups with your doctor. Okay, that's good to know. That I, I'm happy to hear that it's not like that. And I'm happy also to hear that um, the, the surgery went effectively. Um, does this mean I'll need to have more surgery in the future? At this point, Scott, uh, I'm not at liberty to tell you about uh, further surgery. Um, would you mind telling me your uh, habits when you're out in the sun? Well, I've always been out in the sun since I was a teenager, and I haven't worn a lot of sunscreen, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't wear protective clothing. Might be why I'm here today. Well, that's fine. So starting now, uh, you can um, start a new habit or a routine to prevent yourself from overexposure. You can um, cover up using a hat and use uh, sunscreen mm -hmm. so that you can prevent any further damage to your skin. Um, Scott? Is there any, um, how's your wound um, healing so far? Um, thank you. I, I'll take note to do those things in, uh, in my own time, of course. Um, I think the wound's coming on is quite well. Um, there's no pain. There's no discharge. It looks okay to me. Uh, I, but I, I think it might be too early to have my stitches removed. What do you think? Uh, that's good news that uh, there's no complications or no issues that arise from your uh, wound after the surgery. But right now, it's important that uh, we remove your stitches because it is typically removed 7 to 14 days after the uh, surgery. And we have to keep your uh, wound clean and dry. So um, it, it, is it okay if I remove your stitches now? Maybe I'm just scared about the pain of it, but maybe you're right. I trust you to and your surgery to remove these stitches if you think it's fine. So yes, I, I, I'm ready. Thank you. Do you have any further questions for me? No, Nurse Joyce. Thanks for your time today. Thank you for telling me this isn't dangerous. Thanks for the habits and thank you for all of your care in this process. Much appreciated. You're very welcome. All right, and let's stop. Joyce, how does that feel? I think I did, I think I did pretty good this time. Pretty good. Well, tell me, tell me more about why it felt really good for you to do that role play today. Uh, because Today, I was just um, taking down notes on how I can improve my um, speaking role play. And I was having um, practice with my son earlier, who's actually just nine years old. So <laughs> he helped me. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. You've got a great study buddy in your son. That's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, first and foremost, well done for coming on today and doing that role play and stepping up to the challenge of going through a process with with me with an expert teacher on the internet so me. let's give everyone a big uh, round of applause everyone let's give uh, joyce um, a big celebration today for coming on and doing this session i think she deserves it so send in your words of of, um, of comments thank you joyce so um well done for doing the role play 
I'm going to go through now um, a few mini assessments now in terms of answering these questions, in terms of how I think you got on. Well, first and foremost, you are a very easy and clear to understand speaker. You're going to have no problems if, if you perform like that on the day. Um, well done for that. I also think that you're very good with your pronunciation and intonation too. You've got a nice inflection when you speak and there were no notable pronunciation errors in that role play whatsoever. I thought that you spoke nice and smoothly at a nice pace as well, not too fast, not too slow. There was maybe one minor hesitation, but I think that was thinking about what to say next, not searching for language. And that's a, there's a big difference in that. You were thinking about how you transitioned from talking about um, the sun cream and the and the care that was being worn versus the lesions. Just uh, always think about how you might segue into that easier in the role play, but very, very minor thing. Overall, language is great. I thought that you were welcoming, inviting, your tone was good, your language was good. And I thought that your grammar and vocabulary was suitably accurate for the OET role play. So linguistic, you're doing a really, really good job on linguistic criteria. Well done. Let's move on now to the clinical communication criteria. You've just got a naturally empathetic way about you. You know, I think that you, you just seem to care, which is great that comes across. So make sure that you continue to use phrases like, I'm sorry to hear that, not a problem, let me reassure you. Just use those phrases com uh, comprehensively throughout every single role play. I thought that you listened to me effectively and responded effectively for most cases of the role play itself. Well done. Um, finally, was the delivery of information structured appropriately? Well, you flow through the role play in time and guess what? You pretty much came in at five minutes. It was four minutes and 54 really? seconds. <laughs> so your timing was really, really good. Well done. That's a big point that we see lots of candidates do is that they they, they overshoot their time more than undershoot it. So your timing was spot on for that role play, okay? So number four, did the speaker ask a variety of open and closed questions? You did. You could have maybe asked a few more in the form of a segue, aka transition from one point to the other. So I think about three out of five times you asked, how is that for you? Is that okay for you? But a couple of times you didn't. And I was hanging on to think, do I jump in and say something? Okay, I'll jump in and say something. So make sure that you confirm a point with the patient. Is it okay for you? Not a problem. Great. Nice, Scott. And then you move on to the next point. That help with your that will help with your structure and your delivery overall. Um, but apart from that, I thought it was a really, really good role play. And if I was your nurse, I'd be very, very satisfied with the uh, with the with the um the role play today that you delivered. Couple of things, minor things for you to look at would be just uh, make sure that you're asking a greater number of close questions to understand, um, to clarify information and to transition from one role play point to the other. As that was just a couple of minor things that I saw on the role play today was just your transitioning and asking some questions and keeping that empathy throughout the role play. Overall, it was really good and you should be happy with your performance. How does that sound? Um, um, could you specify that uh, last point that I need to improve? By specify the last point, do you mean there are a couple of things I said, asking consistent closed questions to transition from one point of the role yes, play yes. to the other? Is that what you mean? Yes. Okay, sure. So whenever you're about to finish a role play point, Check in with the patient every single time. Is this okay for you, Scott? Am I being clear to you? Is this, Do you understand this? Something like that. They will say yes or no. And that gives you your cue. Say, okay, I can move on to the next point. Okay, Scott, now I'm going to, or let's see, something like that. And then you start the next question that you want to ask in the next part of the role play, probably the next bullet point. It will help okay. you structure your role play and keep everything ticking away nice and nice and smoothly. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, thanks. Perfect, um, but overall, I think that a lot of the time you did it. There were a few times though, where the structure kind of um, didn't move on in that manner, but it was very minor and I thought you did really good for the most part. So keep that in mind. Okay, thank you. Okay, Joyce, well, well done, as I said.
keep practicing with your son or however else you're practicing. <laughs> um, you're doing a, you're, he's, he's a very good interlocutor. We'll get him a job at OET. <laughs> he's doing a great <laughs> job. You're doing a great job as well. Keep up the practice, keep up the great work and um, well done today. Best of luck with your OET preparation. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Joyce. Have a great one and best of luck with your next steps. Thank you for coming along today. Okay, guys. So that was Joyce. Um, let's say what we think about Joyce's performance today. I think we can all agree that she did really, really, really well. Let us know in the chat box too how you thought um, your performance would have been in relation to some of the time management techniques today and some of the other techniques that we've discussed and uh, think about how you can improve your own OET speaking role play performance. Maybe get your son or daughter to be an interlocutor, as, <laughs> as Joyce said. But I hope that you enjoyed that, um, that performance today, guys. I think it was really, really good. Okay, so let's just wrap up the session today very quickly. What did we learn? First and foremost, using your preparation time in the three minutes before the role play is key. Make sure that you allot your time effectively in the role play. You've timed those five minutes really well. And of course, make sure that you're also practicing speaking at an appropriate speed, not too slow, not too fast. You speak too slow, you're gonna go over time. You speak too quickly, you'll go under time, but you'll also possibly trip up in your words and have less structure. Find your sweet spot and go through mock practice to say if your sweet spot is going to help you with your timing. Most importantly, keep your speech simple and accurate. I thought today that Joyce did an amazing job in terms of demonstrating the kind of speed, the kind of simplicity, and the kind of accuracy that we want in our speaking, as it will help us just flow through the role play really nice and smoothly. Make sure as well that you start your preparation well in advance of your exam, ideally, and ensure that you're getting expert feedback on your speaking so that you know exactly what you're doing well and what you're not doing so well. So there's no nasty surprises on the day of the OET exam when you get your results. Practice makes perfect. We get better at anything the more that we do it, the more that we improve. But also make sure that you believe in yourself and your ability to pass this exam. Sometimes the OET can be quite an overwhelming thing for a lot of candidates. It is a high stakes English exam. You can do it though. Make sure you believe in yourself, put yourself into application, put yourself into practice, and you will get your pass, mark my words. So guys, that was our speaking session today. Hope that you enjoyed that. We offer lots of additional free materials here, here at Swoosh English. We did speaking today. We've identified a lot of candidates have a lot of difficulty with reading, in particular, reading part C. So our next free class we want to invite everyone here today to is our free reading part C workshop. It's at Wednesday, 11 a.m. UK time, uh, every next Wednesday. So if you want to come, make sure you register to claim your spot. In the session, we're gonna talk about how we can get you an A or B with example tasks. We're gonna talk about the most common reasons for failure and how to avoid them. We're gonna go through some time management tips for part C of reading as well, as ask your questions in a Q&A session with me at the very end of the session. So if you're in, there's a few ways that you can join. First thing is there's going to be a link appearing today in the session, uh, in the chat box. So if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, a link is going to appear. Click on that link and go through the registration process. The second way that you can join today is by getting your phone and getting your QR reader here and scanning that code right there. Once you scan that code, you'll be given access to the class uh, to register. I'll get everyone a few seconds just to scan that code, but you can rewatch the video and the code will appear on the screen. But maybe the simplest way for most people to join the session is to simply come on over to www.swooshenglish.com. At the bottom right hand side of our main website page, there's a wee button here that says chat with us. Simply click on that button, talk to our team, and we will be very happy to give you the link to this uh, free OBT workshop that we're running on reading part C, but also answer all of your other questions as well. Let me just go through that one more time. There's gonna be a link that's going to appear in the chat, guys. So make sure that you click that link to uh, sign up to the session. I'm just getting that ready to go on the OBT YouTube. Keeping in mind, sometimes the link doesn't appear in OBT YouTube, we can avoid that. So if you can't see it on YouTube, guys, 
make sure then that you take the other steps such as scan the barcode that is here. So scan that barcode, guys. Or thirdly, come on over to swooshenglish.com, go to the chat box at the very bottom of the right-hand side of the screen, chat to our team, ask, can I join the Reading Part C workshop? And our team will give you the link as well as answer any other questions that you have in regards to OET preparation. So guys, thank you so much for joining the session today. It's been a pleasure. Uh, first, once again, I want to thank Joyce for her contribution today and for doing a great job of demonstrating how a really good OET role play should go. So it's been a pleasure, guys. Um, please come and join the reading workshop on Wednesday. And um, please follow us on um, our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Switch English. We produce lots of content to help all of the candidates help their OET exam as an OET, PPP, and All-Star. We've been doing a very good job of that so far. And yes, it's been a pleasure having everyone in the session today. I'm seeing lots of lovely comments come in um, as well. For example, AJ has said, thanks. This session has been really, really helpful. You are so welcome, AJ, as well as everyone else sending their comments in too. Also, if you'd like the session today, make sure you give us a like, give us a love, give us a thumbs up on our Facebook channel. Make sure you're following us on Facebook. Make sure you're subscribing to us on YouTube as well. And even come across and check us out on TikTok if you're there. We do lots of funny videos on that too. So once again, guys, thanks a lot for everything. I look forward to seeing you in the reading workshop on Wednesday. And if you're a Swish English student, I look forward to seeing you in the classes as well. So have a great day, everyone. Thanks a lot for everything. Take care. Good luck with your OET preparation. And I hope to see more of you very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.